Here, we define a new state function, enthalpy. It is the sum of internal energy and PV. The differential form of enthalpy is shown below. According to the first law of thermodynamics, the first two terms is heat. In an isobaric process, dP is zero. So, the change of enthalpy is the heat. One of the significances of enthalpy is that, most of the processes occur in constant pressure. So, the enthalpy change can be directly measured from the heat of the reactions. Heat in isobaric process can also be expressed in terms of heat capacity at constant pressure. In other words, the heat capacity at constant pressure is the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature with pressure held constant. On the other hand, the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature with volume held constant can be calculated using the definition of enthalpy. Note that, the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature with volume held constant is heat capacity at constant volume. For ideal gas, the relationship among pressure, temperature and volume is known. Therefore, the partial derivative of its enthalpy with respect to temperature with volume held constant is also the heat capacity at constant pressure. Thus, for an ideal gas in any condition, the enthalpy change is CPDT. It leads to the corollary that, in an isothermal process of an ideal gas, the enthalpy is conserved. The molar volume of a condensed matter is very small compared to gases. Thus, the partial derivative of its enthalpy with respect to temperature with volume held constant is approximately its heat capacity at constant volume, which is close to its heat capacity at constant pressure. Thus, for condensed matter in any condition, the enthalpy change is close to CPDT. Combining the results from gas and condensed matters, we have the conclusion that, for any system, the enthalpy is almost conserved an isothermal process. An endothermic process is a process in which the system receives heat. In an isochoric endothermic process, the internal energy increases. In an isobaric endothermic process, the enthalpy increases. An exothermic process is a process in which the system releases heat. The internal energy increases in an isochoric exothermic process. The enthalpy increases in an isobaric exothermic process. The change of a state function in a process without chemical reactions is equal to that in a two-step process, in which one step is isobaric while the other is isothermal. Since the enthalpy change in the isothermal step is negligible, the overall enthalpy change is equal to the enthalpy change in the isobaric step. Thus, the enthalpy of the final state can be calculated from the enthalpy of the initial state and the heat of the isobaric step. If there is no phase transition, the enthalpy change in the isobaric process is the integral of heat capacity at constant pressure with respect to temperature from the initial temperature to the final temperature. The standard state is the reference state used to calculate the properties of states in other conditions. The state functions at the standard states are denoted with a degree symbol or a plimsoll symbol in the superscript. In this course, the degree symbol is used for simplicity. The standard pressure is 100,000 pascals, or 1 bar. There is no specific standard temperature. The thermodynamic data are usually provided at 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin. The standard state for liquids and solids is simply the state of the pure substance subjected to a total pressure of standard pressure. The standard state for a gas is the hypothetical state that it would have as a pure substance obeying the ideal gas equation at standard pressure. From this, a component in an ideal gas mixture is at its standard state if its partial pressure is equal to the standard pressure. The standard state of solute is usually chosen as the hypothetical state that it would have at the standard molality or amount concentration but exhibiting infinite dilution behavior. The standard molality is 1 mole solute per 1 kilogram solvent. The standard amount concentration, also known as molarity, is 1 mole solute per 1 liter solution. We will discuss the details of solutions in later chapters. The standard enthalpy of reaction is the total molar enthalpy change in a system during a chemical reaction, when all reactants and products are in their standard states. The states of matters have significant influence on the enthalpies, so they should be denoted in a chemical reaction when the enthalpy is concerned. G is used for gas, L for liquid, and S for solid. If an element has multiple allotropes, the type of allotrope should be denoted instead of the state. 
For example, the reaction between carbon as graphite and oxygen in gas state to form carbon dioxide in gas state. The standard enthalpy of this reaction is the enthalpy change during the reaction, if they are all in their standard states. An endothermic reaction is a reaction whose standard enthalpy of reaction is positive. For example, the decomposition of water is an endothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction is a reaction whose standard enthalpy of reaction is negative. For example, the combustion of graphite is an exothermic reaction. Pay attention, do not confuse them with endotherm and ectotherm. The prefix endo originates from Greek word meaning within. Endothermic means that heat is taken within by the system. Endotherm means an organism that can maintain its body temperature from within. The prefix exo originates from Greek word meaning outwards. Exothermic means that heat moves outwards. The prefix ecto originates from a similar Greek word meaning outside. Ectotherm means an organism that maintains its body temperature from outside. In biology, the term endotherm refers to an organism that can maintain its body temperature by using the heat released by its internal bodily functions to do so. For example, the ostriches maintain their temperature higher than their surroundings with metabolism. So, they are endotherms. The reactions and endotherm uses for its temperature regulation are exothermic reactions, like the oxidation of glucose. In principle, the standard enthalpy of a reaction is the total molar enthalpies difference between the reactants and the products in their standard states. However, in reality, we cannot calculate the standard enthalpy of a reaction using this equation since the absolute values of enthalpies of substances are unknown. It is because the internal energy includes electronic and nuclear energies, which is too complicated to calculate and impossible to measure. However, we actually don't need to know the absolute values of enthalpies. We can use Hess's law to calculate the enthalpy of reaction. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change during a chemical reaction is identical whether the reaction is made in one step or in several steps. Though Hess's law is an experimental law, it can be understood easily because enthalpy is a state function, so the change of enthalpy is independent of path. For example, the complete oxidation of graphite to carbon dioxide is the sum of the incomplete oxidation of graphite to carbon monoxide and the oxidation of monoxide to carbon dioxide. Thus, the enthalpy change of the complete oxidation of graphite is the sum of the enthalpy changes of the two reactions. We can use Hess's law to calculate the standard enthalpy of a reaction by dividing the reaction into the following steps. First, decompose all the reactants to their constituent elements. Second, form the products from the elements. The enthalpy of the reaction is the sum of the enthalpy of the two steps. For example, in the oxidation of carbon monoxide by nitrogen oxide to form carbon dioxide and nitrogen monoxide, the first step is the decomposition of carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide to graphite, nitrogen and oxygen. The second step is the reaction of graphite, nitrogen, and oxygen to form carbon dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. The standard enthalpy of formation of a compound is the enthalpy change during the formation of per mole of the compound from its constituent elements, with all substance in their standard states. The element here is the allotrope in which the element is the most stable in standard condition. From the definition of standard enthalpy of formation, we can find that the standard entropy of formation of the elements are zero. For example, phosphorus and carbon have a few allotropes. The most stable allotrope of phosphorus in standard condition is white phosphorus. The most stable allotrope of carbon under standard condition is graphite. So, the standard enthalpy of formation of graphite is zero. The standard enthalpy of formation of diamond is not zero. The standard enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide is the standard enthalpy of reaction from carbon as graphite and oxygen in gas state to carbon dioxide in gas state. The enthalpy of the decomposition of the reactants to the elements is the opposite of the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of all the reactants. The enthalpy of formation of the products from the elements is the sum of the standard enthalpies of formations of all the products. So, the standard enthalpy of reaction is the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of the reactants and products multiplied by their stoichiometric numbers.
Pay attention, the Stomshi metric numbers of products are positive. The Stomshi metric numbers of reactants are negative. Here, I show you the standard enthalpies of formation of some compounds. For example, the reaction of acetylene and hydrogen to form ethylene. The standard enthalpy of this reaction is the standard enthalpy of formation of ethylene minus the standard enthalpy of formation of acetylene and the standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen. Here, the standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen is zero because it is an element. Another example, in the oxidation of carbon monoxide by nitrogen oxide to form carbon dioxide and nitrogen monoxide, the standard enthalpy of this reaction is the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide plus the standard enthalpy of formation of nitrogen dioxide minus the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide and the standard enthalpy of formation of nitrogen monoxide. To calculate the enthalpy of the reaction in some states other than the standard states, we can create a three-step process. First, the reactants are converted to their standard states. Then, the reaction takes place. The enthalpy change of this step is the standard enthalpy of reaction. Finally, the products are converted to their original states. Since enthalpy is a state function, the enthalpy changes of the two pathways are equal. The enthalpy change between the original states and the standard states can be calculated using the integral of heat capacity at constant pressure of the system with respect to temperature. The heat capacity is the sum of heat capacities of all the reactants or products multiplied by their Stomshi metric numbers. Thus, we can calculate the enthalpy of the reaction in any condition. You can pause the video now to check the example by yourself.